Hey, what's up? The Cabinet Vision Guy here with the final podcast dealing with the various levels of Cabinet Vision Solid. In the last video, we went over the features that were added to Cabinet Vision with the advanced level. So this time, we're going to go over Ultimate. Now, this is the basic module that you're going to see me using in my podcasts. It's called Ultimate because it has some great features that are unfortunately unavailable to you at the more basic levels, making it a really awesome version of Cabinet Vision. As always, let's start by looking at some of the stuff we can do with Cabinet Vision Solid Ultimate that we couldn't do before. We'll start off with the part catalog. You can see that I have a few more columns that weren't there in Standard or Advanced. These columns allow you to define part level pricing. Labor Setup allows us to provide a setup time for a part. Basically, how much time does it take to perform the setup process for one of these parts in the shop? Labor each is an additional value that is added on top of the setup time that we need to add for any additional parts over the first one. Price allows us to create an equation that can be used to specify a price in the bid center, and matrix allows us to set up a special matrix pricing. Now matrix pricing is set up by clicking on the price matrix button here at the bottom of the window. Since I don't have a size matrix defined, I have to create one first. We'll call it simple matrix. Now I just need to define the series of lengths and widths that this matrix will cover. Now that we have that done, we can actually begin to create the pricing matrix. Let's just call it simple. The pricing matrix uses the size matrix that we created to determine what equation to use for a part of a specific size. More information on how this is set up and handled will be in your help files. If we close this, we can now select our simple pricing matrix from the dropdown. And that pretty much does it for the part catalog. Let's move on to the new IntelliJoint catalog and see what that is. Before we open the IntelliJoint catalog, let me explain what an IntelliJoint is. It's an intelligent joint. Basically, it's an operation or a series of operations that you can place between two parts that will create a joint of some sort. If we open the catalog, we can see what we get to do. The catalog is split up into tabs. The first tab, Operations, allows us to design and have a basic preview of the joint. These three windows give us a top-down view of the joint, a side view of the joint, and a 3D view of the joint. This area allows us to define the various operations that we want applied to the joint. We can add, copy, and delete operations, as well as specify various custom parameters that can be viewed in the object tree. Each operation has a series of options as well, such as the name of the operation, whether it's a master or slave operation, the type of operation it is, which face it appears on, positioning information, sizing information, the number of operations created, and a tool that we can select for the operation. Now just to clarify some things, an IntelliJoint is placed on a part. The part that the joint is attached to is the master part. So if an operation is a master operation, it will be applied to the master part. If it's a slave operation, it will be applied to any part that the master part touches. With IntelliJoints, we can only specify two types, either a dado or a line bore. The face is the location on the IntelliJoint that the operation will be placed on. All of this information is just sampling information for you to get the nice sample sizes to look at. The test tab is just another way to see how the joint is operating. And that's it. Again, more information on this can be found in the help files. So we can now move on to the new countertop construction methods. I'm not really going to go over this in depth, as this functions identically to the cabinet and drawer construction methods. I did, however, want to bring this up because, starting with the ultimate version of Cabinet Vision Solid, we now have the ability to define our own custom countertop construction. This is really powerful, as before you could only get a basic countertop that may or may not have worked for your shop. Now, with the customization options available here, we can really do a lot to get exactly what we make in the real world and even cut it out on our machines. Now let's go ahead and create a new job so that we can check out some of the in-job features that are really, really awesome.
Once I get the job opened, I'm going to just draw a simple wall in my room. Next, I want to add a cabinet to that wall. I'm doing this so I can show off one of the most powerful features that has been added to Cabinet Vision Solid Ultimate, what is known as the Advanced Shape Editor. Now, we could shape cabinets and parts in advanced, but not like this. Instead of using special tools to move the lines or add points, we now get to use simple CAD tools to create a shape. This is really great as we can more easily define the shapes we need in a very simple fashion. Let's say I wanted to turn this square cabinet into a corner cabinet with a 45 degree angled face. The first thing I would do is grab my line tool. Next, I would just use my mouse cursor to click on the middle point of the front line and then the middle point of the right side line. Now I can just click on my trim tool, which by default will delete the line segment that I click on and trim away these two extra sections. Now I just need to go through and make sure that my lines are set to the proper types. This one needs to be an automatic end. This one needs to be an automatic end, which it is. And this one needs to be an automatic back. Finally, we make this one the new face of the cabinet. Excellent. Now we just need to check the shape and make sure that it's closed up properly, which it is. And we can tell that because the outline of the shape is green. If it was invalid, then it would turn red. And now we can just click the return button, save the shape, and take a look at it. Now obviously this cabinet needs a little more work to get it to what we need exactly, but I think you can see the power that we have with this subtle yet excellent swap of the shaping tools. Now these tools are what we use to shape everything, from cabinets to parts to operations. As you may have come to expect, I will direct you to your help files for more information on how the advanced shape editor works in full. From here though, let's delete this cabinet and throw on a couple of simple base cabinets. Now that we have that, Let's take a look at the countertops. Let me just build a quick countertop using the auto build feature. And now without leaving the countertop view, I'm gonna right click on the top and select edit. This is a new feature for countertops. We get the ability to enter the countertop as if it were another cabinet object. Now I know that wasn't a whole lot for that, but it's just a nice little thing to be able to mess around with and get a better view of the top itself. Next, I want to edit a part to show you something really cool. So, going into the cabinet view, I want to select a part to edit. For what I'm going to go over, it doesn't really matter what part I choose, so I'm just going to go and use a left unfinished end. With that part selected, I can select edit. Now, if you have Cabinet Vision Solid Advanced, which gives you the ability to edit parts, you might be unfamiliar with the tab that it brought me to. This is the Cam tab. Here we can place operations on our parts, using the same CAD tools that we used to shape our cabinet earlier. We have the full set of tools here that we can use to place operations as well as edit them. This box on the sidebar allows me to select a work plane. What is a work plane? Well, that's the three-dimensional space which we can place our operations on. Every part will have a series of work planes based on the shape of the part itself. I'm going to select the top. No, you know what? I'm going to select the front work plane. You saw how the view changed to orient the part in relation to the selected work plane. Any operations that I place now will be associated with the selected work plane. We can always get the general idea of the orientation of the work plane in the cabinet object by looking at this window here. The work plane that we are currently on is the one that is highlighted red. Now let's go ahead and place an operation. We'll make a simple line bore operation. First I need to select my line bore tool. Next I'm going to draw the line from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. You can see that as I draw the line, the uh, holes begin to show up. All of these holes can be controlled by the properties here in the sidebar. Now obviously this is a totally pointless operation as I can't think of too many times that you would need an angled line bore. 
Well, I guess if you had one of those angled bookshelves, you might need one. Or perhaps some of those shoe cubbies. Oh yeah, what about... Uh, you know what? I think I'm going a little off topic here. Let's move this thought train back to the task on hand. Now that we have our line bore operation placed and ready, let's go back to the cabinet view and check it out in 3D. Let me just set this to a wireframe render instead of a textured render. And now you can see our line bore. With these tools you can create other types of operations as well, such as routes, holes, and dados. You can create several custom shaped routes and do all kinds of really cool things with this. Let me pause here for just a second and let you know something. I make this podcast in a series of short segments and then kind of stitch them all together. You might be wondering why I'm telling you this. You might also be wondering why my voice has changed. It's because in the middle of making this podcast, I've gotten ill. The audio sounds a little off as I'm just getting my voice back. I didn't really want to stop as I'm almost done going over the ultimate features, so let's finish this up real quick. Now, I can't really show this next feature, but it has to do with the report center. With advanced, we could select from a multitude of reports that are pre-made, uh, basically the most reporting we could do so far. With ultimate, however, we get that and more. No, not more reports, but rather the ability to create any amount of custom reports that we want. We would just need to get a copy of crystal reports and we can make all the reports to, that we need to suit our needs. On top of having the ability to create custom reports, we also have the ability to export our bid data to third-party software. What does that mean though? Well, let's say you use Cabinet Vision to engineer a job, but you have a job costing software that you already have implemented. No worries, Cabinet Vision can handle that. We just go to the bid center, then we click on the export bid data button. This will prompt us for a save location. Once we select that, Cabinet Vision will export all of the data that is listed here and store it in the location that we just specified. There are several bid softwares out there that can take that file and import it directly in. And that about wraps it up for the new features added with Cabinet Vision Ultimate. While it may not seem like a whole lot of features, what you just saw brought Cabinet Vision Solid from being a great design and engineering software to the ultimate design and engineering software. A lot of this power really shows up well once we add on the S2M Center, the Closet Module, and the other various add-ons that are provided by Vero. For a list of them, you can go to cabinetvision.com slash compare. This will let you get a view of all the differences that there are between the different levels of Cabinet Vision. As always, I would like to take a moment to thank Hayfula for their continued support, and I will now leave you with a quote from one of my favorite sci-fi authors, Isaac Asimov. <laughs>